what's going on everyone today is september the 9th 2022 i want to talk about this article real quick before i give you all the updated price prediction for ethereum apparently coinbase and a couple of ethereum backers sued the united states treasury over that tornado cash sanction i'm going to talk about that because it will have reverberations across the crypt cryptocurrency space as to whether or not you can have a financial entity like the u.s treasury impose sanctions on open source code so we're going to talk about that real quick and then i'm going to talk about ethereum because i have noticed how the market in ethereum since my last video has not gone down so obviously we need to come in and readjust the situation reassess the situation and see where the market's going to go next so if you guys want to join me hit that like button should have been also subscribe here to my channel so now real quick check this out this article came out from fortune uh, on september the 8th 2022 and it's going into how a couple of employees from Coinbase and a couple of people from or supporters of Ethereum has sued the United States Treasury. All right. So going through this article real quick, there's been six people of Tornado Cash, six people who use Tornado Cash, a popular decentralized cryptocurrency survey. They filed a lawsuit on Thursday against Janet Yellen and other officials over their decision to put sanctions on on tornado cash services in august okay now the u.s government can impose sanctions on publicly available open source code this is what they're trying to answer okay that is the question can the united states government impose sanctions on publicly available software code when you talk about jurisdictions who has the ability to place sanctions on software code is it the United States? Is it the European governments? Can China do the same thing? What about South Korea? What about Russia? What about Ukraine? What about India? What about governments in South America? Are they able to place sanctions on publicly available open source code? Because this is how the United States is reaching. They're reaching into placing sanctions on code computer code no one individual no one entity not a business but code is that possible this is what this lawsuit is going to try to figure out now the complaint is about 20 pages and it was filed in texas in the federal court in texas that the users claimed the decision to sanction tornado cats exceeded the government's authority hmm violated their free speech and property rights under the United States Constitution and threatens the ability of law-abiding Americans to engage freely and privately in financial transactions. Now, it, it looked like they have a case. I'm just going to keep it real. The United States government has no business impeding on one's free speech, property rights, which would be the Bitcoin or the other cryptocurrency that they are maneuvering in Trinidad Cash. TornadoCast has emerged as a popular tool for those wishing to hide their cryptocurrency transactions by using smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, It allows people to deposit crypto in a pool alongside other users and then distribute it to third-party wallets. The process makes it highly difficult to determine who gave funds to a given wallet. Now, the government of the United States is trying to say that North Korea is utilizing this software code to launder money okay but these individuals who brought the lawsuit against the united states treasury saying that they're not doing they're not using tornado cash for that purpose they are law abiding law abiding americans they want to keep what they do private though like persons have the ability to remain private in their dealings in their financial dealings they don't have to let everyone know what they bought what they sold how they're moving their funds it's not supposed to be publicly. I mean, when you go out today and you use cash or some other form of fiat currency, everybody doesn't know about it. That's the purpose of Tornado Cash. Now, these are the Ethereum backers who is suing the United States Treasury. Preston Van Loon, a prominent figure in the, in the Ethereum community who claims he cannot access thousands of dollars worth of ethereum deposit with tornado cats and his brother joseph who says he intended to use the service to privately fund an ethereum node 
and staking service but can no longer do so because of the sanctions. So the government is impeding this individual's ability to make money. They're stopping him from creating money, from being successful. The planets also include Tyler Amida. He's a California security analyst at Coinbase. So Coinbase is even jumping in on this. Who alleges that he used Tenetikas to make anonymous donations to support Ukraine. But now he can't do it because the United States government placed sanctions on this software code. Amida claims the United States placing sanctions on the service and peace is right to donate and by extension his right to express himself under the first amendment has the government overreached their boundaries Almeida is one of two coinbase employees to put their name on the lawsuit the company whose ceo brian armstrong has vocally objected to the sanctions on internet accounts is paying the legal bills of the employees and four other plaintiffs so coinbase is putting money where the mouth is they're fronting a bill on this lawsuit now this is the lawyer for coinbase paul grewal who added that the company believes the government overstepped its authority by placing sanctions on code if they could place sanctions on code then every code that is already out every application every DeFi software code every blockchain code Every software that we use daily on our smartphones, on our desktops, on our workstations, everywhere is open to being sanctioned. The decision by the Treasury Department to impose sanctions on code used by Tornadocast has alarmed the crypto industry and the broader software development community who fear the move will stifle privacy and free expression. The Treasury has imposed the sanctions violations of whence bring severe penalties like this is how they utilize sanctions previously they put them on people or persons and companies but in the tornado cast case the target of the sanction is not on a specific person or company but on a series of smart contracts because there's no company there's no one individual who controls tornado cash the Tornado Cash privacy protocol consists of perpetually self-executing code on the Ethereum blockchain that cannot be altered, edited, or otherwise controlled. So how can the Treasury come in and put sanctions on unedited, cannot be altered code? <laughs> now, according to Greenwald, the sanctions decision is like the government going at the bank robbers by banning the use of public highways the crooks use for their escape. That's a pretty good analogy. Coinbase and the planets appear to believe their strongest argument turns on how to define quote, persons subject to the sanctions regime. The law in question describes persons as individuals or entities. You guys can see that software code is not mentioned as a definition of a person. Neither of which covers something like open source software code according to the complaint. Now, with that alone, they won the case. Because if it is not defined that software code, open source software code is defined as a person, <laughs> they have no case. They cannot put sanctions on software code. So this is going to be interesting. We're going to see how this plays out because, again, the software community, not only in the cryptocurrency space, but software as a whole, we had to pay attention to see how far reaching the courts would view the government's ability to place sanctions. Now, they're expecting to have a decision around the first part of 2023. They don't think it's going to last too long. It's kind of like an open, open and shut case, like I told you. It seems as if the United States Treasury has overreached their bounds. We'll see how it plays out, though. Now, let's get back to the price chart. Let's go ahead and talk about Ethereum real quick. I like it. I can tell from my last video, which was on the 29th of August, that the market in 
Ethereum, you guys can see that the buyers are definitely in control. Okay, I didn't, I didn't get this one right. It went wrong. It was incorrect. So what I'm going to do, since I see that, one thing that I notice about a lot of other people is that they like to double down on their original ideas and, and where they think price is going to go. I'm not that person. If I see the market going opposite of what I originally intended, I know I need to get out the way and jump on board with the market. So I'm going to get rid of this. You guys can see that the market currently is up 4.45%, 18.46% down would be the prediction. But hey, you guys can see that the merge is coming up. You guys can tell that the overall strength in Ethereum is still here because I wanted to show you all this on a three day chart. Okay. So even to miss all of this selling that occurred into the market in Ethereum, like look at these three day price bars real quick. We saw weakness here. Okay. Right here on this three day price bar, selling came in on this three day price bar, this one and this one as well. And we're still seeing the market in Ethereum go up. Like that's, that's pretty bullish. That tells us that the overall momentum is definitely leaning on the buyer side. So we needed to get out the way because that definitely tells us just on the three day time frame that Ethereum is going to continue to go up. Even here on the two day, there's no need for us to be in the way. Now, the only thing that we need to try to figure out in this video is, OK, if we're looking for price to move higher, how high? You guys can see that we are currently seeing price in Ethereum come through right here. Okay, so this prior area back in May 2022, where it's utilized as support, but given the last couple of two day price bars, the three day price bars, I'm still seeing strength to pass above $1,700. We can still see the market in Ethereum move above that particular level. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on a chart. I'm going to go ahead and look for the market in Ethereum to continue to trend higher. Zooming out and looking at this on a five day chart, you can see how far back this area was used as support so yeah 1700 1725 it's going to be real important for us to see the market move above that okay so let me go ahead and put this on the chart uh, we are going to look for the continuation to move higher in ethereum okay i'm going to go ahead and put that here And as long as price in Ethereum continues to stay above like $1,475, $1,475, we're going to continue to expect the market to run up. The first area for us to see the market hit some selling would be around $1,770, $1,770. You guys can see this on 3.5%. I get it. It, it. Like I always tell everyone, if that is what the market is going to offer to us on this move higher, then we'll take it. If you haven't been in a ride all the way back since the beginning or ending of August, we'll take that as well. My second area is going to be up here towards a $1,915. Okay. And we're looking for the market ultimately to come towards this descending line. So we're looking for the market to go now. All right. So I am done. Give me your thoughts on your price prediction in Ethereum and as well. Tell me about your opinion on the case. Make sure you maintain the profitability and as always, trade different.